Hello, I am Joel Barajas, and I'm going to present to you the advertising incrementality measurement using control geo experiments. It's a use case for the universal ad campaign. So I am a research scientist at Yahoo uh, Research and Verizon Media. And my co-authors are uh, Tom Cedar and Mer Bay from Uber Technologies in Marketing Data Science. Okay, so as I said, I'm Joel Barajas. Yahoo Research, Verizon Media, and Tom and Mer are from Marketing Data Science at Uber. So, first of all, the problem. So the problem is purely, okay, we wanna measure the incremental, the channel incrementality. And although this is a typical problem in the literature, the vast majority of references uh, assume a user randomization holdout, meaning we can hold out users randomly. So the problem from the advertiser side is, uh, we wanna do the same, measure channel spend effectiveness, use case for optimal body allocation, meaning every quarter advertisers are interested in figuring out how much they are gonna get based on their KPIs uh, when we, they invest certain amount of money in marketing. So, but the constraints are that from the advertiser side, we have limited access to user traffic. That comes from uh, several, mostly business reasons and privacy concerns, but that is really a constraint because we can't uh, randomly separate users, call it device IDs, um, a specific type of users, cookies, that's not possible. So then usually what uh, advertisers do in, the, in market analytics is we handle aggregate time series of conversions, KPI signals. That's basically because we can, uh, we know very well how people convert from the advertiser side, but we struggle to figure out who saw ads from the advertiser side. So that translates typically to time series models. So, and those time series models, which is the typical benefits here, are often used for so-called media meets models which is, these are more the financial models where the goal is to come up with a channel response cure or cost cure or elasticities, which basically tells you, okay, given this amount of money as an input, this is the number of incremental KPIs, incremental conversions we expect as an output. So with that aggregate data, so what we are proposing here with purely advertiser levers, is doing a geo experiment design. So, by geo experiment design, means we should be able to target a geo level, to target advertising spend at geo level, which is fairly typical uh, these days. So, it's, that, that's a standard capability we have. So, we, we want to do some market match testing. And the approach we follow is a spend code intervention, and then we use a synthetic control based causal estimation. So um, when we need to be able to um, target uh, the geo level because we wanna randomize geos, that's the typical approach. But the main issue with that is, uh, say we randomize DMAs, there are close to 500 or so DMAs in the US, but those are uh, really very different. So there's a lot of heterogeneity amount then, so if we try to identify uh, by randomly uh, choosing, say, 100 DMAs, they're gonna have a lot of variability. And remember, for these uh, studies, the main issue is really variability because uh, there's a lot of effort invested in running an experiment. So if we arrive to non-conclusive results, then basically all that effort is potentially wasted. So we wanna maximize our chances of detecting a true effect. At the same time, we don't want to bias our experiments. And, and, and that's why we do a market match. I'll come back to how we do that uh, specifically and what is our proposal. But at a high level, we want to find the best pair of market uh, matches. And then once we have those, uh, those pairs, we, one we call control, the other we call treatment, and we are going to do that experiment intervention. That for our cases spend cut, that comes from a, a diminishing returns principle, meaning 
it's easier to see a, a change if we suspend the spend than if we double the spend. That comes from doubling the spend doesn't necessarily translate into double performance. It's most likely less because it's already some level of saturation. As, but if we decided to cut completely, then we, our chances of seeing a significant drop are higher. And we had a control-based causal estimation, synthetic control. And that's synthetic control because it's, it's again, if we had only a, a control pair, which basically is going to be a predictor to, um, in, in a time series model to predict, I mean, we have a feature to predict the output of the treatment uh, group, the treatment geo. So, yeah, so that's, these are basically the four steps. Finding the, the, the best market pair, uh, doing a liberal spend efficiency, I'll come back to what I mean by that, and intervention, spend, uh, market spend cut, and then we measure the effect. So, we are gonna go first on the causal estimation because that's gonna be useful or market pair finding. So, high level, this is a, a, a Bayesian structural uh, equation approach, meaning we had a typical uh, dynamic linear model where we had an observation state here on, on Y, uh, which is a function of a time series model, which is uh, this FT times theta T, a Kalman filtering based model. Then we had a control predictor there. Um, this is interim control from the point of view that um, we don't observe the control group per se, but we rather predict the treatment group. So it's a, we, we try to find the best predictor. We can think about that way. So it's interim because we are creating the control. Still, we have a notion of intervention, but it's a, the estimation falls into the family of synthetic control. So, okay, so then how are we gonna pick the, the pairs? That's the $1 million question, because that's, we are going around randomizing geos, because we have large variability among geos, but then we wanna do our best that we can to pick the market pair, otherwise we are gonna buy as a experiment ourselves. So the approach we are proposing is, I mean, basically we had a bunch of parameters in, the, in this estimation uh, framework. Essentially, we need to find the market pairs, we need to find intervention times, and those models need a train and follow up periods. I mean, uh, we are gonna train, say, for three months, we are gonna run the experiment for one month or one month and a half, and that will be the follow up. Then we need to find some training amount. So we need to do a lot of AA tests. AA tests means we go, bring historical data, we have a predefined set of markets here. Uh, so we're gonna call here placebo interventions, which is AA test, meaning we do nothing. But then we pick all these parameters and then we identify where, uh, the, the times that we see an effect when that effect doesn't really exist. That would be a false positive from a hypothesis uh, testing point of view. So the key part with this is uh, we need to do this a lot of times across all these parameters in this, in this, uh, on this side. Then we do the AA test estimation. It's key that we identify the treatment estimation method a priori. So once we have that, uh, because that, that's gonna be conditioned, the results gonna be conditioned on that. So then we find the best pair of, of, of the best market pairs based on those that had the tightest confidence intervals and we still integrate it. And those are our treatment control. So we're gonna go with, for the face of this paper. We are showing a use case on UEC. UEC is, stands for Universal Ad Campaigns. It's a Google uh, type of advertising. Essentially, you had uh, all Google properties into a single door. So it's meant to be effective because of, uh, Google optimized across all of them, but there are concerns from advertisers in the sense that there is little customability. There are always concerns like too much of a black box. And then they don't provide a whole lot. So then, in, so then here's the, the treatment intervention. The treatment intervention is, you could see here the treatment control span, and then we're gonna stabilize the span, which means we're gonna find, uh, to account for different populations in both, in both markets, we stabilize 
based on CPA, on last, from uh, last touch attributed CPA, and then we suspend the spend, which is the cut here. So this is our results. And as you can see, there is a small drop, but it's consistent, but not significant in a week by week basis. So what we wanna do is cumulate then and towards the end, after eight weeks or so, we managed to see a significant conversion lift uh, drop of 6.57% and a significant drop of spend. That's because they're trailing spend. It's not like we can control the full spend, but uh, we still need to find uh, the difference in both spend. And from there, we estimate cost per incremental uh, conversion. In the paper, there are the details how we do it, but it's basically the difference in the spend over the difference in control, and that is uh, the effects on the spend, the effects on control, and that's how we find the cost per incremental conversion. Um, and yeah, the conclusions are, um, between comp always doing the whole doubt is better. There is no question about it. But when you don't have access to that, then, then we are left with this time series aggregated approach. It's more challenging because we don't know, uh, in, in this approach, we need to just put a spend in a geo and spend outputs. So in those outputs, we don't know who is really seeing ads and who are not seeing those ads. So that translates into less precision. So we need a certain amount of, of a spend to, to spend a bigger, uh, a bigger effect. That is a constraint. And usually these, mod, these experiments come to inform uh, these cost cures and incremental conversions for uh, later predictions and financial planning. And we provide evidence that UAC is incremental. There might be more uh, studies on the road and to prove it that completely, but this is at least initial uh, evidence that that is the case. Okay, that's me. Any question, feel free to pin me in the, during the conference. Thank you.